today is December 7th at 6 a.m. All the puppies look really good. Some of them are nursing and some of them are still sleeping. And I'm going to give Luna some food now. Today is a clinic day for me, so I'm going to be off to work right now. And Jaime is going to be staying with these guys um, for the morning. She's got um, rice, ground turkey, squash, and bell peppers. She loves bell peppers. And I'm going to take her to go to the bathroom outside before I leave. And, uh, and then Jaime will be taking care of her until I get back. I cannot believe it is like legit snowing this morning. And by snow, like we're in Texas, so I don't mean there's anything like white on the ground. Um, but uh, it's, it is kind of starting to stick to my car actually. Um, and, and I'm Texan, so like I'm already like afraid to drive in the snow now. Um, <laughs> Uh, so right now I'm actually going to go pick up some hot cocoa because it's really cold and everybody wants something warm to drink. So I'm going to um, pick up some of that. It is just really cold right now. And the mountain is actually like completely white um, from the clouds, not the snow. But I think once the clouds clear up a little bit, you can already kind of tell that there is some snow on the mountain. When I left the house, the road was actually really clear. Like there wasn't um, any any snow like on the road. The road wasn't even really wet. Um, but it's actually coming down a lot harder now, the snow, like you can really see it. Um, I'm so surprised because like three days ago, I was actually just like wearing shorts. And now it's like super cold. <laughs> And it's like crazy Texas weather. Uh, it reminds me of one year when I was living in San Antonio. Uh, there was a really, really bad winter. And it was so cold. And um, it was raining. And then the roads actually turned to ice completely. And I was driving home from work uh, late at night. And my car was just sliding down the road. Just like sliding everywhere. So that was kind of terrifying and it was just like all I could do was just steer to keep from hitting stuff because it was just completely just going there was no no controlling it really so I'm driving home right now um, just finished the, at the clinic it's still pretty early actually and it was snowing a lot like the whole time and it was really cold actually um, not inside though and um, we did some spay and neuter surgeries and um, some dentals and then there was one dog that came in for a lot of growths on its body so um, had a lot of that removed uh, that's one of the things that like I'm <laughs> like uh, very paranoid of groomers it's just after seeing stuff like that, you don't even want um, to get your dog groomed, um, like actually get its hair cut with those clippers, because uh, that's how they get it, is sometimes these groomers don't clean the clippers right, and then it actually um, spreads this thing, and then they start, you know, getting growths after that, and it's all over the body, so that's horrible. Uh, luckily, I don't have any dogs that actually need that type of grooming anyway. And uh, so I'm headed home now, uh, got a lot to do, and I'm excited to see the puppies. And I'm also going to be happy when I can go inside and be warm. I cannot believe how much it snowed. Uh, not, remember, this is still Texas, okay, so it's not like there's um, snow actually on the ground. Um, but it was pretty crazy, even someone was joking like, oh my god, we're having a blizzard. Because yeah, that, that was a blizzard for us. And one of my friends posted on Facebook, like, Blizzard 2017, we will rebuild. I was like, yeah, I thought we were all going to die. Uh, but it's actually kind of cool. It hasn't snowed here for, I think, three years now. I think it's been three years since our last snow. And it's only like every 10 years that we actually get snow. 
on the ground, like, you know, where you can make a snowball. Uh, you can't really make even snowmen here. It's just going to be like a tumbleweed snowman. With, it's all like dirty and gross. <laughs> and sorry for the, the bad uh, <laughs> filming. That's kind of the only place I could put my camera. While also being able to drive because obviously that's important. <laughs> There's not really any new developments with the puppies other than, you know, they eat, sleep, and poop. <laughs> so, um, I thought that I would let you guys watch them, um, while I answer some of the comments from the last vlog. Now, I did get a lot of questions that were answered in the vlog. So, at the end, I answered a lot of the questions that I thought that people would have. And like I said in that vlog, I thought I would just get it out of the way in the first vlog. So I won't be addressing any of the questions that I answered from that vlog in this video or in any upcoming videos. Um, so I did get a lot of comments, uh, you know, about that. Like, are you keeping them, for example? And all of that was already answered. So uh, and it's just like people that didn't watch the video, which it's like, that's fine if people don't want to watch it. And I understand that these vlogs, you know, some of them might be kind of long. That one was really long. But if you um, don't want to watch it, then just don't comment either. <laughs> uh, so I could tell that a lot of those people didn't watch the video. Um, but a lot of you did actually watch the whole video. So thank you for that. And... Um, you know, when I think as a YouTuber, like you expect what you're going to get hate on and animal YouTubers get a lot of hate. And so I totally expected to get hate on the vlog for having the puppies. Um, that's, you know, just something like I know is going to come because people have very passionate views about certain things and some people can't handle, um, any views that aren't exactly like their own. So I wasn't at all surprised by the hate comments and the people that were really upset. Um, but I actually did get a lot of people that were really positive. So that was really nice. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the comments. So one person commented on the video and they were like, well, I'm unsubbing because I won't be subbed to a liar or something like that. The comment actually got deleted now. Uh, and I, I actually did answer that one and I was like, well, I, I don't know what I lied about. And that's the thing, um, for anybody who was accusing me of being a liar, I've never said that my dogs were fixed. I even said in a video that my dogs were not fixed. Well, the corgis, um, the other ones are. And so that's, um, I guess, you know, if they thought I was lying about that. Uh, if they thought I was lying about breeders, I've said since the beginning that I support responsible breeders. I'm not against pet shops. I'm not against breeders. And I've said that in other videos. And I don't know, I guess maybe some people think that I'm against that because typically, you know, somebody who rescues animals, fosters animals, does the kind of work I do is usually like, oh my gosh, PetSmart's evil. And that's not my view. Um, which I've never, I've never hidden that. I've actually talked about it. So I don't know where that came up. Olive, AKA Olivia, the lupus girl. She commented, wait, you advocate for spay and neutering yet you breed your dogs. I do not understand. So that's, um, something that's like, yeah, people can do that. Uh, I do advocate for spay and neutering. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that it's something I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to have to do it. No, I'm of the mindset that like people need to have their pets spayed and neutered. And that's because the general population can't really um, handle dogs that aren't fixed. And you'll see a lot of people that are like that. Uh, we had one person go into the clinic and uh, to get, you know, shots for their puppies. They had a boy and a girl. And somebody would ask, you know, are, are you going to get them fixed? And the man responded, no, I'm not going to get them fixed because, you know, they're brother and sister. They're not going to breed. <laughs> and it was like, uh, well, that's not the way that it works. And see, that's just sometimes a misconception that people have. And so, uh, I don't know what it was like two months later, he comes in cause he's getting his, his, um, dogs spayed and neutered because they did breed and, you know, he wanted it done 
right away, you know, like the next day, because that would prevent a litter. Um, and so it's just like things like that. Yeah, people do need to have their dogs spayed and neutered because a lot of people don't know how to control breeding. And that's what some people are, you know, arguing like, oh, um, just leave the dogs intact. They're fine. You can control it. And I don't agree with that position at all because a lot of people don't know enough about these animals to, to do that. Um, so I, I am a big fan of, you know, you know, get your pets spayed and neutered. Um, don't breed unless you know what you're doing. And to say that you can't encourage people to spay and neuter their dogs and, you know, support breeding at the same time is that it, I think just kind of a silly notion, really. I mean, I got my dogs from a breeder. So if I was against breeding, then, you know, why would I have even started there? Um, plus, um, if you have, you know, dogs that are, for example, mutts, like, you know, get them spayed and neutered. It's, it's not a breed that somebody's after. If somebody doesn't really care what type of dog that they're going to get, then yeah, just go to a rescue and get one that needs a home. But sometimes somebody wants a certain breed of dog um, and, you know, you, you breed those and you make sure you've got healthy dogs and all of that. But um, there are so many good reasons to get your dog spayed and neutered. And maybe they didn't watch the video because I even said Luna's getting spayed right after this. And then a few people asked if I addressed this in any of my other videos. No, um, nobody actually knew anything about um, my dog having puppies. This was something I didn't even talk about on social media. I'm kind of the person that likes to hit you that saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch. I don't want to talk about things until I, I guess, know what's going on. So I didn't even talk about her um, being pregnant. I just wanted to wait and see how everything went and then talk about it. Wolf San Cedric commented, who's cuter, Megan or the puppies? Vote. <laughs> I am pretty sure the puppies are going to win that one. They are absolutely adorable. Stacy Hammer said, you look very tired, but I would be too. I'm actually so exhausted right now. I didn't sleep, you know, the day before when Luna was um, going through labor. And then uh, last night, I ended up going to sleep late and I had to wake up really early. So I'm not used to this. I am used to getting a lot of sleep and I'm just so exhausted. Caitlin G commented, rural areas have tons of corgis. Um, that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, from what I've noticed uh, in rural areas, typically where you're going to have herding animals, there really isn't a lot of corgis. There there are a lot, as in people are buying them, are keeping them, but not for adoption. Um, there's actually still a big demand in those areas. So there there might be probably more corgis in rural areas because of the, you know, herding use, but they're not corgis that are available. Those are people's pets. And you don't find uh, corgis in shelters. Uh, down here in the Southwest, it is actually really hard to find any corgis available for adoption. So that's definitely not true. Okay, so a few people were asking who is the dad. <laughs> I um I thought that this was pretty clear in the last video, but just in case it wasn't, Clark is the father to these puppies. Little Ghost Draws said, uh, but you always say don't breed dogs. Uh, yeah, typically I'm always telling people, they're like, well, do you have any advice? I want to get my dog bred. And I'm like, don't, don't do it. Um, I always hear kind of ridiculous reasons for it. Like somebody was like, I want her to go through the natural experience of it. Your dog doesn't need to go through the natural experience for it. Um, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing when you're breeding. And yeah, a lot of times I am going to say, hey, don't breed your dog. And especially uh, like I had said in the last video, also, if you have a breed that's very common, I don't think that you should breed. Um, but, you know, other people in here, too, were saying that not everyone can get a shelter dog, that some people are better off with a dog from a breeder, which, you know, actually is true. So there, there is that, too. Anonymous Anonymous says, I don't blame you for breeding your dog. I breed my dogs as well. I love to see newborn puppies. I thought all you American people believed don't breed, adopt. I'm from Asia. <laughs> Uh, so that was a funny comment. Um, actually, there's tons of breeders in America, tons of dog breeders. 
It's just that uh, they get treated very badly by other people in America. It's because people a lot of times do shame people in the United States for breeding. So yeah, there, there's tons of breeders, but that's why you might not see it as much. Uh, Little Ghost Drawers commented, I thought that you were against it uh, in referring to um, breeding. Absolutely not. I don't know where anyone would have even gotten that idea. I really encourage adopting, but I've never once said, don't go to a breeder. I've even said, you know, get a responsible breeder. I even have a video where I uh, went and got Clark from a breeder. So um, I don't know where that confusion is coming from. So I got this really nice comment from Sophie Sleep. And it's kind of a long comment, so I might not read all of it. But basically it says um, that people like me that are, you know, breeding their dogs are not contributing to the population of dogs that are in shelters. Here she says, having physically healthy and emotionally balanced dogs breed is a great way to ensure corgis or other pedigrees have bloodlines that breed out genetic problems in that breed. Puppy farms and dog hoarders are just two of the many reasons why shelters are overrun. Also, people not taking good care of the dogs that they have. So you guys should, you know, check out her whole comment and she's 100% right. Dogs filling up shelters is because of bad owners. Uh, there's still puppy mills in some states and there's just people who, like I said, they don't know how to control breeding and they their dogs end up breeding and they don't know what to do with those dogs. And they're, you know, they end up with mutts and things like that. And so, yeah, it's not responsible breeders that are responsible for all the animals that are in shelters. And by responsible breeders, we're talking about people who breed healthy animals and who follow up with their animals, making sure that their animals stay in good homes. If something happens, a good breeder will actually take back the dog that they sold. Leopard Gecko said, how exciting, they're absolutely adorable. But like I said, I actually got so many comments that were just really, really positive. So many people telling me congratulations, they're so adorable. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate all those comments. It was really nice to have your guys' support. Renee Vanity said, I am a veterinary technician and you did wonderful. It's a stressful time and you helped in all the right ways. Congratulations and I can't wait to see these cuties grow up. And yes, it is very stressful and it's it's worse when it's your dog. Working with other people's animals is one thing, um, but when you have that emotional attachment, it just is so much harder. Queen of Wolfteria asks, will Clark be neutered after this? Um, so I don't plan on getting Clark neutered and uh, for puppies that I do keep, what I plan on doing is having all the females spayed and neutering uh, and not neutering the boys. So spaying the females and leaving the boys intact. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I do want to continue this line. I really, really like these dogs. Uh, I'm going to talk more about, you know, their lines in a little bit, but um, that way I can breed them even when they're older. And see, with females, this was a good time for Luna because she's very young and it was going to be easiest on her now. You know, when Luna is eight years old, I can't breed her. But it, when Clark's eight years old, and if I did end up wanting to have another puppy, I can breed him. And that's just, you know, because as, as long as their sperm works, then they're good to go. And with females, you have a window. And I'm also very lucky in the fact that I'm going to be able to uh, control the dogs with them not breeding, you know, other dogs with Clark. And if I keep any boy puppies, there are risks of not fixing the boys. And, you know, some of that is like they will have a tendency to try to run away. Like if they smell another female in the neighborhood that's in heat, they'll want to go to her. And so that's a, one of the reasons you want to get your dog neutered is because they won't have that tendency to want to leave. But since I do have a lot of knowledge and experience, I feel confident being able to leave my males intact. So here's a comment from Our Little Homestead. I'm disappointed to see this from you. I support breeding fully, but only by real breeders who are experts in the breed and genetics. Real breeders health test all their dogs and then match breeding pairs based on those results. People who just want puppies for the sake of puppies should not breed. <laughs> so, 
Um, this was an interesting comment because it was such a huge assumption. And I, I don't like it when people make huge assumptions. Like, if you have a question, just, just ask me. I'd prefer that. But basically, this person jumped to the conclusion that I don't know anything about corgis and that I didn't test my dogs for any health issues. So I did say in the video that this was something that I discussed with my vet and got advice from my vet. And I found this comment to just be absolutely ridiculous. And it, it was just kind of like, um, so basically, if I decided to, you know, breed my dog every year and sell the puppies and was a real breeder, then it would be okay. It, that just doesn't even make sense. So let's talk about my dogs. My corgis are very well-bred corgis. Um, Luna's line is, you know, for herding, she is actually very helpful with the animals. And that's a line that's, uh, you know, really good looking dogs, um, really, you know, mostly for livestock and things like that. Clark's line, he comes from champion show dogs and shows in agility as well as um, AKC shows for, you know, body confirmation and all of that. So both of these dogs come from great lines. And, you know, that's also true for, for Luna. Some of those were also shown as well. And they actually are both tested and they're really, really good dogs. They're very healthy and they're really good looking dogs as far as the breed standards go for them. Uh, Clark is a mix uh, of Cardigan and Pembroke, but that was of course intentional and it was to combine two extremely good lines into one dog. My corgis are worth quite a bit of money. And if I wanted to, I could make a good profit from breeding them and selling puppies. And no, I'm not going to choose to do that. And saying that because I didn't choose to do that makes me not a real breeder. Well, I'm not trying to be a real breeder, but that I should be shamed for not being a real breeder is just ridiculous. So the combination of Clark and Luna is a very good match. And that's, you know, like I said, had always been my intention. So, of course, I did look into that and I wanted um, two corgis that were going to be compatible. And then, you know, to end all of this, to, you know, conclude it, as, as far as breed standards go, honestly, if that was such a priority to me, then I'd be cutting off the tails from these puppies. So, breed standards, to a certain extent, are sometimes ridiculous. And you shouldn't go off of that 100%. So yes, actually my dogs are great for the breed standards and they are very healthy, um, but that's, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm not going to start running a breeding program, but just because I am not running a breeding program does not mean that my dogs were not compatible, that they're not healthy and that I'm just, you know, breeding mutts off the street. So I guess to end this and as a response to our little homesteads comment, I am disappointed by your lack of respect in assuming so much. You could have just asked. Ben Pratt commented um, that he doesn't understand why everyone's so critical about, you know, dogs being in shelters and all of that because there are lots of kids in foster systems yet people still choose to get pregnant and, you know, start a family. I had actually never heard that argument, but I actually got a couple of comments of people saying that. And that actually is kind of a good point. Pamela Lindsay commented, um, why didn't I get an ultrasound or x-ray done? Uh, so I am not a fan of getting an x-ray done on a pregnant dog. <laughs> I don't know, just something about how you're not supposed to get it done if you're pregnant, I think can't be too different from a pregnant dog. So I, I didn't want to do that. Um, as for the ultrasound, that wasn't really an option that was available at my vet's clinic. He didn't have that tech. And I could have gone somewhere else, but I didn't think it was a big deal. And honestly, I really was expecting a small litter. Um, this was just totally unexpected. And I think if I ever did it again, I probably would get an ultrasound done. And I don't mean get it, I don't mean do it again with Luna. I mean, if I were to, you know, 10 years from now, breed another one of my corgis. Um, then I would probably consider that. <laughs> so here's a comment from Mexican 9, I think. Hold up, Clark was a puppy just a year ago and he's already being bred. 
Dogs shouldn't be bred unless they have health clearances and are at least two years old. I'm really disappointed since I was on your side at first. Um, <laughs> I don't think this is really about sides. I think this is just about what people are doing with their life. Um, but so let's, let's address that comment. Yes, Clark is, um, a year old. He turned a year old on Halloween, so he's just over a year. So this is funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to give a biology lesson here. So with, uh, male dogs with boys, once they start producing sperm, you know, they have sperm and they can breed and their bodies are just going to be working that way. Uh, sometimes, you know, older dogs or younger dogs will have less sperm, but there's no problems that they're going to have by uh, breeding another dog. That's that's not something that's, you know, something bad's going to happen to them. With males, once they're breeding age, they can, you know, breed until they're old. And you don't have to really worry about things going on with their bodies like with females. So with females, you're waiting for them to adjust and cycle through and letting their organs develop and all of that it's different they're the ones that carry the babies the boys aren't going to be carrying the babies the babies aren't going to um you know be requiring anything from the male's body once the male gives his sperm then it's done and he's not going to have anything else to do with making these little puppies with you know having them develop so that's all going to be on the female's body. Um, as for uh, health clearances and testing and all of that, that's actually done in the puppy stage. You can, you know, get the puppies tested very early on. So that has nothing to do with age there. And then as for health clearances, I, I guess he's saying that I, you know, didn't um, get that cleared with my vet, even though that's something that I did address. But yeah, breeding the males young, that's not going to have any you know, negative effect. It's not like, oh, this puppy came out sick because the male was under a certain amount of months. That's just not how it works. Um, so I guess if you have any more questions about that, just kind of look up some information on biology. Maple Elliott commented, it took me one second to Google and I already found three corgi rescues in Texas. Too bad there are no corgis anywhere and you just had to breed. I had so much respect for you, but I can't subscribe to someone who added more dogs to the world just because she wanted her perfect little puppy. <laughs> I really don't care if people unsubscribe. It, you know, that's uh, whatever to me. I'm not going to revolve my life around how can I please everyone so that nobody unsubscribes to me. Like, that's just impossible. Um, as for the rest of her comment, I, it really made me laugh, actually. I'm guessing this person doesn't understand the difference between a uh, dog rescue and a dog available for adoption. Th those are very different things. As for Texas, um, I'm also guessing that she has no idea how big the state of Texas is. Um, just because I live in Texas doesn't mean I'm next door to everyone else in Texas. Think of it this way, okay? The California ocean is closer to me than the Texas ocean. So, you know, think of that and how far away everything is in Texas. So if she wanted to argue that, I am actually better off looking for a rescue in New Mexico and Arizona. Now, as for her saying that there are corgi rescues, yeah, actually, there's corgi rescues I've found in New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, and Colorado. However, typically, those rescues don't have any dogs. They are corgi rescues, but they have a waiting list of people that are waiting for a corgi, and they don't have, you know, 20 corgis sitting in their rescue. There is a rescue in Arizona, and they usually have, like, maybe five or six corgis. And I think, you know, they get them from across the country. Uh, but I don't qualify for that rescue because a lot of times it's um, an only dog type of situation, which, you know, I can't have a dog that's supposed to be in a home with only as that's supposed to be in the home in a home as the only dog. And also because they want to do home checks. And since, you know, I live six hours away from that rescue, they're not going to do a home check for me. All the way over here in Texas. Now the reason I know all of this is because I actually spent two years trying to get a corgi from a rescue. I spent a very long time 
searching and looking and being on waiting lists and I just was actually never able to get a corgi from a rescue. Now I did adopt a corgi so I do know exactly how hard it is to adopt a corgi. I adopted a corgi from a high kill shelter in New Mexico and this was a situation that was just so unordinary. The dog was available and they gave me an eight hour window in which to adopt him. Now I live several hours away from this shelter and I wanted this dog so bad but at the time I was working and I couldn't just drop everything and drive off to get the dog like that that was impossible for me and I really wanted to do that but there was no way that I was going to be able to. So I actually started getting into Facebook groups for that city, the city that this shelter was in and kind of like talking to people that lived there. And I was like, hey, um, I really want this dog. Would somebody be willing to go and pay the fee for me so that I can go up in a few days and pick it up because I really want it. And somebody actually was like, hey, yeah, I'll do it for you. It was this lady. She was, you know, willing to go and pay the fee and actually pick up the dog and keep him at her house until I was able to get him. And so I sent this woman, this complete stranger, money over the internet because I wanted this dog so bad. So I actually sent her the money. Do you know what a stupid thing that is to do? It really was. And I knew it was a stupid idea, but I wanted that Corgi so bad and I wanted to be the one to adopt him. So I sent her the money and you know what? She went to the shelter and she paid it and she got the dog for me. What an amazing woman. And I'm actually friends with her now. So that's to show you guys it is very hard to adopt a corgi. It's not easy. And somebody's saying, oh, I already found several rescues. Yeah, there are several rescues, especially in the Southwest, that exist that are for corgis. That does not mean that they have corgis available. That does not mean that I qualify for those corgis. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed me talking about the puppies and answering some of the comments that I did get on my last vlog. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!